Hello everyone, um, my name is Neil Layton, I'm a children's book um, illustrator and author um, and seeing as you're sitting here so nicely I thought it might be quite fun if I read you one of my books. Um, so this is a book I've chosen, it's called, it's called A Planet Full of Plastic um, and as you can see it's got my name at the top, Neil Layton, because I'm the illustrator and the author. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Planet full of plastic. Hello you. Who? Me? That's right. Quick question. Do you ever think about what things are made of? Because some things are made of paper, like this book. Some things are made of wood, like, um, well, like the wooden bookshelf behind me. Some things are made of metal, like, um, well, the chair I'm sat on has got metal legs. You can't see it, but the chairs, the, the legs of the chair are definitely made of metal. Some things are made of glass, like, um, that's better, like that glass. But some things, in fact, lots of things, are made of something called plastic. Crazy, groovy, plastic is fantastic, they all said. And they started making lots of it and using it for just about everything they could. Plastic chairs, nylon stockings, plastic glasses, plastic food box, nylon lounge suit, plastic space suit. Um, the space suit that, that Neil Armstrong wore when he landed on the moon was made of, I think, 21 different types of plastic. And the flag that he put into the moon was made of nylon. Got um, plastic straws, plastic bags, plastic plates, plastic bottles, plastic shoes, nylon flares, plastic flip-flops, computers, um, airplanes. The new A1, A787 is, um, is almost a half made of plastic. Got plastic nails. Oh, I haven't got my plastic nails on today. Um, Lycra sportswear, trainers, footballs, all sorts of things made out of this stuff called plastic. But there was a problem. Because if you look around you, you won't just see plastic where it's meant to be, you'll also see it where it's not meant to be. And here we have an illustration of a park, and we've got a nice um, a sort of canal going through the park. But you'll notice there's lots of plastic where it's not meant to be. There's some plastic bottle in the canal, plastic wrapper in the canal, a bottle in the hedge, some... What's that? Another plastic bottle just over there by the wall. Oh, crumbs, what's that? A dog poo in a plastic bag just left on the path. So lots of plastic where it's not meant to be. Because one of the most amazing things about plastic is it doesn't biodegrade like natural things. And the, the little boy character says, oof, that's a big word. Let me explain. If a leaf drops to the ground, it will go yellow and then brown and all skinny and thin until it's just mud and dust. You can't see it, but little bugs are eating the leaf, breaking it down, turning it back into natural forms. So there's a leaf dropping to the ground, going yellow, skinny and thin. Or there's the bugs eating it, and there it is going all brown and skinny and thin, and eventually it's just mud and dust. And it's the same with an apple core or any natural thing. And this is called biodegrading. Apple cores take about eight weeks to biodegrade and other natural things take different amounts of time. So sticks take about a year, leaves take about six months, paper a few weeks, banana peel about six weeks depending on the temperature. And if you think about it this is a really good thing because in autumn all the leaves they, they kind of fall to the ground don't they? And then we can run about and kick our feet in them. But then come winter time, where have all the leaves gone? They've all disappeared, they've all biodegraded, they've all um, turned back into natural forms and gone into the soil. And this is a really good thing, because otherwise we'd have all the leaves dropping in autumn, wouldn't we? To the ground, and then the next autumn even more leaves, and then even more leaves, and the whole, whole place would be full up with leaves, wouldn't it? But that doesn't happen because the leaves biodegrade and are sort of taken back into the soil. But plastic is different. If it drops to the ground, it just stays there for years and years and years. It doesn't biodegrade. So here we've got a, a bottle dropping to the ground. 
and then it's, it's there. After one month, it's still there. After six months, it's still there. After one year, it's still there. And many years later, it's still there. It doesn't biodegrade, really, says the boy character. Yes, really. And this makes plastic super useful. It makes it super useful because it means that plastic lasts a long time. It means it's very kind of durable. Um, but it also creates a problem. Because if plastic ends up where it's not meant to be, it will stay there for years and years and years and years and years until eventually the weather breaks it down into smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller pieces of plastic. And a huge amount of this plastic eventually ends up in the ocean. All the plastic in them has broken up into pieces which are so small you can hardly see them. And scientists call the very, very little bits of plastic pollution microplastic. So here we've got, this is an illustration of a piece of microplastic. A scientist will call a piece of plastic that's smaller than that a microplastic. And they're even more of a problem than the big bits because the animals see them and they think they're food and they eat them. And the microplastics fill up their tummies, leaving no room for proper food. And often the plastics carrying contain nasty toxins, which is poisons. So if a, if a little fish eats them, so much a bigger fish eats a little fish, and so much a bigger fish eats that fish. And some scientists think there will soon be more plastic than fish in the sea. So what does our boy character think about this? Well, he says, he says, but I don't want animals to get hurt. And I don't want our, pl our planet to fill up with plastic. So what do we do? Well, we all need to try and reduce how much plastic we use every day because the less we use, the less we have to clear up. That makes sense, doesn't it? And most importantly, the people that make stuff for us need to think carefully about what they do with plastic. Because I think creating things that will be thrown away in minutes, but that will stay in the environment, in the environment forever, isn't right. And here, we've got an illustration sort of showing the amount of plastic that rubbish that is made um, every day. And the boy's holding up a poster that says reduce. So that's one of the things we can do to, to stop this um, plastic pollution. We can try and use less plastic. The other thing we can do is reuse. Because as I said, plastic is, is a, it's a strong material. It lasts a long time. And lots of, plastic, lots of plastic things are meant to be reused over and over again. So let's make sure we do. So reusable carrier bags, reusable lunch boxes, reusable water bottles. And here we've got an illustration. The, the little boy is thinking, um, he's thinking, oh, well, I'm actually a bit grown up for baby toys now. I don't really want them anymore. But perhaps someone else might. So he's put a sign saying, free baby toys, please take. So that's reuse, that's one of the other things we can do. And the third thing that we can do is we can recycle. So if you've got a recycling bin in your house or in your school, make sure you use it. Well, thank you very much for listening, that's all now. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.